So the postman's been, uh, it's been several times actually, we've got some, a lot of stuff to have a look at. So this is basically all my switches and stuff uh, from a number of different suppliers. That's quite a significant part of the, the show. That's um, toggle switches. So these are um, basic on-off toggle switches. Uh, couldn't get all this from the same supplier. Uh, so it's all basically um, bits and bobs from here and there. Maplin filled in a couple of blanks. Maplin's very expensive actually. You don't imagine you can just buy all these toggle switches and things. For Maplin, these would be like three pounds each or something. And uh, from this supplier, they're about 60p. Proto Pick, this is another supplier. Uh, I quite like the box the package in here actually. That's like that's might even be a plastic box that. Um, I hope this is a good supplier because um, later on when I look at the backlighting for the panels, I'm gonna be looking at uh, electroluminescent panels to provide the light. And uh, this is the this is gonna be the supplier. They're quite expensive, but um, but they're going to do a good job. These are for things like the fire extinguishers and the um, I don't know auto feather test. Um, basically, so you can't press the switches accidentally. The last thing you want to do is uh, you know in some inopportune moment accidentally switch on the auto auto feather test switch. Or, um, or discharge a fire extinguisher into the engine. <laughs> you might say, rather inconvenient. So we've got a whole bunch of them. Ah, now then. this is important. These are the um, this is the heart and soul of the panel, really. These are the Bodner. Hopefully, these are the Bodner boards. Get rid of all that. So what we got here? Ooh, yeah. We've got several of these. These are the BBI 32 switch switch boxes or bit switch. Bit, I don't know what bit boxes. That's what he calls them. Um, so basically, you plug this into a USB port. Uh, it appears to Windows and to things like FSUI PC and uh, FSX as a joystick with 32 buttons. Um, you can connect 32 switches of any description to these terminals. Uh, and these are just push fit, I think, uh, where they're supposed to be. So it couldn't be easy really, uh, as long as it works. And then uh, these will be mounted some, somewhere behind the panels on four screws. So we've got, we got I think uh, we've got three of them. And then we've got the fourth one which is not quite the same, and that's because this is uh, it's a bit more expensive. It basically does the same thing, uh, it's slightly bigger, and the reason for that is it's got 32 buttons, but it also has, uh, I think I'm right in saying, 8 analog inputs. Uh, same deal, it's all push fit, and uh, so in, in, in principle I could connect uh, eight axes up. Uh, I bought this because basically I've got one analog axis that I need to implement, that's the rudder trim, but um, we'll no doubt find, find some use for the rest of that. So that's £140 just for those boards. This better be good. So these are the rotary encoders, these are for things like the console window, the heading bugs and so on. Um, got all the bits we need to fit those. Uh, we've got knobs for those. Then we've got two, uh, actually I'm surprised to see these are smaller. These are dual encoders. They come with little circuit boards. Uh, which, I don't know, I mean I, I guess you can solder these onto the circuit board and then take the wires from the board 
or I might just solder wires to the tags. The tags are quite close together, so that's going to tax my soldering skills, uh, of which I have none. <laughs> so the next thing to do really is to start to lay out these panels for real. What I'm going to do is prototype them with um, some bits of hardboard, uh, um, just just so I can get the you know the ideal uh, practical or min practical minimum spacings for things like distances between the toggle switches. So it's difficult to just hold that in your head or do it on paper, um, with you know until you really get the physical switches there and get a sense of, of how big they are. So that's what I'll do next. I'm going to cut some probably like 30. Well, I've got. I've got an idea that the panels are going to be basically multiples of 15 centimetres. So we're going to have basically 30 by 30 panels and 15 by 30 centimetres. Um, the reason for that is there's nothing uh, magical about that. I've got an acrylic sheet. The, the panels are going to hopefully be made out of clear acrylic. Uh, and, it, and it comes in a sheet. 1.2 meters by 60 centimeters. That's a convenient size, which is about about as much as I need. I, I hope I need two of each really, because I've got two millimeter acrylic. And uh, if I just show you that, actually, ah, so I've got the hardboard here, and I've got the acrylic. Uh, here's the acrylic. I want you know you can't. That's massive. You can't really see that. Uh, it's got cover, you know, it's got a backing on at the minute so it doesn't get too scratched. But the problem with it, and I think this might be a problem practically, even if I double up, um, you know, that's the problem. Basically, if you imagine some of those um, toggle switches mounted on there, I've yet to see if it's rigid enough. My idea is it's going to be like a sort of 30, millimeter, 30 centimeter square. But with a wooden frame around the outside, that's for mounting. It's for um, create. I mean, basically, it's going to be a, going to be a shallow box with the panel on the front. I've gone for um, panel mount hardware that can fit through a round round hole uh, exclusively. Uh, the only exception to that is the obviously is the um, the seven seven inch monitor that's going to be the GPS. Um, and I mean the reason for that is just um, ease of construction really, you know you can you can drill the holes with a with a, with a standard um, power drill and hopefully that's just going to be very easy. So here we've got the first attempt at laying out the GPS and comms panel. As I said earlier, this is basically on a. It's going to be a 30 centimeter square. That's roughly 30 centimeter square. It's on a bit of paper at the minute. That's uh, uh, sitting on top of a piece of hardboard, which I'm just about to take a drill to and mount all these bits of kit. It's kind of difficult to see here because the obviously the switches are all just laid on. There's the original rough layout on paper. There it is. So, as you can see, it's got all the switches uh, that I'm going to use on the actual panel. So, uh, anyway, there you go, that's just a quick update. Uh, more as it happens.